today's show, Tesla announces the Model 3 will get CCS quick charging in Europe, and so too will the Model X and Model S, thanks to a new CCS adapter. GM says it's not going to be making any electric pickup trucks anytime soon, and Volkswagen claims it has 15 million electric cars worth of batteries already sourced, you know, in time for its massive EV push. These stories and more coming next. Hi there, folks. I'm back in the studio at last. And since I managed to pick up food poisoning while I was away, I'm kind of glad that I am. It's been a full 10 days since our last big roundup show, so let's get on with it. If you've been considering a Hyundai Kona Electric, you'll know there's been something of a shortage of battery packs affecting the affordable long-range EV, something that's also been a problem with the shorter-range Hyundai Ioniq EV as well. Thankfully, it seems Hyundai Kia has managed to secure a second unnamed source for lithium-ion battery packs, meaning it should be increasing its production figures shortly. Moreover, we've just found out that Hyundai has said it will ship Kona Electrics outside of the usual ZEV state launch markets in the US when deliveries begin later this year, at least if customers have a solid order, although those customers will also need a friendly support dealership to do so. As part of Tesla and Elon Musk's settlement deal with the US Securities and Exchanges Commission over those now infamous 420 tweets, Tesla's board of directors has chosen existing board member Robin Denholm to replace Elon Musk as chairman of the board of directors, effective immediately. Denholm is currently also chief financial officer of Australian telecommunications company Telstra, meaning she's currently not chair of Tesla's audit committee. But once her six-month notice period is complete, she will become full-time chair at Tesla. Congratulations to Robin, and here's to a smooth transition. Alphabet's self-driving company Waymo has been working on autonomous vehicle tech now for more than 10 years, and its current generation of autonomous vehicles are already demonstrating level 5 autonomous operation in both Phoenix, Arizona, and in the San Francisco Bay Area, California. To date, its test fleets have offered service through its 400-person early rider program, but this week we learned that it's allegedly readying itself to launch a paid autonomous taxi service in Phoenix as early as December. Following some speculation and a few sightings of Model 3s fitted with strange new charge ports, Tesla has confirmed that European Model 3s, production for which is now underway, will ship with a CCS quick charge port instead of the Type 2 port of European Model S and Xs or the Tesla connectors found on North American cars. This means Model 3s in Europe will be able to use Tesla superchargers, which are also getting retrofitted with CCS, as well as a public CCS quick charge station. And to ensure existing customers aren't left out, Tesla's also announced a new CCS quick charge adapter as well. General Motors has been producing electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles for some time now, and in recent months it's really been ramping up its plans for many, many more plug-in models, with 20 promised in the next five years alone. This week, however, we learn that pickups won't be among those models, with GM executive Mike Abelson confirming that for the foreseeable future, GM will continue to roll out pickups and SUVs as it works on its electric and autonomous vehicle products in the passenger car segment. If you're frustrated by by this or want some logic behind it, I've made a video on it that you can watch right here. Faraday Futures' spiral into the history books continued this week with the news that the third of its trio of co-founders has finally decided to leave the company, leaving Faraday Future with very little in the way of C-level execs. Yet as the death dance continues, EVAIO Blockchain, a blockchain cryptocurrency firm, has announced it's offered Faraday Future a $900 million funding package in order to keep the company afloat. It wants to build a blockchain for electric cars, so the investment does seem to make some sense. Will it happen? Well, talks are ongoing, so uh, watch this space. Mercedes-Benz has officially begun deliveries of its GLC F-Cell plug-in hybrid this week in Europe. Combining plug-in hybrid car tech with a hydrogen fuel cell, the GLC F-Cell is designed for fleet use and combines a battery pack capable of up to 51 kilometers of electric range, that's 30 miles or thereabouts, on the NED test cycle before it turns its onboard fuel extended system on to extend the car's range. The fuel cell stack, meanwhile, can add an additional 430 kilometers, 267 miles of range per fill, which is less overall than, say, a Tesla. But the advantage for fleets is the fueling time that hydrogen has. Yes, electric makes sense for most, but for fleet operators, 
this may be a smart choice depending on the use case scenarios. Volkswagen continued its electric car strategy media push this week, claiming that it's already given the green light to build a total of 50 million electric vehicles on its MEB platform, obviously with help from the MEB electrification toolkit across the various brands it owns. What's more, it claims that it secured 50 million electric cars worth of battery packs to ensure that all those new models will be built. It sounds like impossible greenwash, but I think Volkswagen isn't planning this massive number of cars overnight. Instead, well, it's making public the kind of things every other automaker knows to keep quiet. Who will get there first? Well, that's something completely different. Both General Motors and Tesla have already publicly called for the US federal government to extend its existing federal tax credit program for EVs, removing the current 200,000 vehicle per automaker limit currently in force. But this week, they and a bunch of other groups, NGOs and stakeholders joined forces with Nissan to form the EV Drive Coalition. Effectively a lobbying group, the EV Drive Coalition is hoping to influence policymakers and get them to change current federal tax law to secure EV tax credits for some time to come. The goal is, of course, to sell more EVs, but it's not clear if the current administration will play ball. And now it's time for short shorts. You know, those stories we want to tell you about, but we don't have time to go into in depth. Solid state batteries might be a holy grail in the EV world right now, but Panasonic, which of course makes batteries for Tesla's cars at the Gigafactory, says that solid state batteries are commercially still 10 years away. For now, while it says it's researching solid state batteries, it says lithium iron is the tech to use. Years after the Dieselgate scandal broke, Volkswagen and Daimler have agreed to spend up to €3,000 per car in Europe to try and get those non-compliant cheaty diesels off the road. The funds will be spent on a range of things, including trade-in incentives and, where possible, retrofits of cleaner emissions systems. Velos, a consortium of California state regulators, advocates and utility companies, say we'll see the half-millionth electric car registered within the state by the end of this month. At the end of October, there are around 491,000 EVs on California's roads. In order to get as many Model 3s delivered to customers by the end of the year, Tesla has just acquired several US trucking companies in order to ensure it has enough vehicles to do the trucking. Tesla now says customers can order their Model 3s until the end of November to ensure delivery by the end of this year and thus get full federal tax credits before they ramp down. The city of Hamburg has become the first place in the world to receive production Mercedes-Benz e-Citaro city buses. Designed to tackle smaller city streets and long duty cycles, the e-Citaro is Benz's answer to e-buses from Chinese companies and, of course, US-based Proterra. In addition to promising all those electric batteries and EVs, Volkswagen announced this week that its MDEM and Hanover plants will become EV-only production facilities by 2022, following the Svakwo plant in their transition from ICE to electric. It's all great, but let's start seeing some of those EVs, eh? In order to ensure its auto industry is protected from global fluctuations in Asian electric car battery prices, Germany has set aside 1 billion euro to support domestic battery cell production, with the goal of having 30% of all EV batteries coming from Europe by 2030. The Renault-Nissan-Mitsubishi alliance has announced an investment in Enivate, a startup that's developed a lithium-ion battery chemistry that says it offers five minutes of fast charging capability, incredible energy density, and a low reaction to temperature changes. The amount of funding is unknown. Tesla is currently working on a new, improved battery cell design for its vehicles, says its president of automotive. The new design will be lighter, cheaper to make, and manage a higher range. The Gigafactory production line responsible for these new cells will go online in about six months. Kia's aging Soul and its Soul EV will get a next-generation debut at the LA Auto Show, with many rumours suggesting the Soul EV will inherit the long-range battery pack from the Hyundai Kona Electric. It's not clear, though, if the hamsters will be back to advertise it. I doubt it. Also gearing up for the LA Auto Show is automotive startup Rivian, which released a teaser video this week for the launch of its R1T and R1S electric pickup truck and SUV. The truck, the R1T, claims a range of over 400 miles, semi-autonomous capabilities, and much, much more.
After a short production cycle, General Motors has killed the Cadillac CT6 plug-in hybrid. The luxury plug-in, which used the same drivetrain as a Chevy Volt, was sold for US$75,000, which, let's face it, is Tesla territory. It's no surprise that it, like the ELR before it, didn't sell well. And those are your short shorts. There'll be more next time. We know that Ford is already working on its own production electric Mustangs, but there is now a way to get yourself a classic 1960s styled one with all-wheel drive, three-second sprint time, and 400 horsepower. Behold the Charge Electric Mustang from British firm Charge Automotive for a cool quarter million dollars. No, I'm not joking. You can have one of 499 limited production cars. Range? Well, it's only 124 miles. But then, if you've got a quarter million dollars, I'm guessing it's not your biggest concern. How the other half live, eh? If you prefer your electric vehicles a little more practical, then you might want to take a look at this. An all-electric prototype Ural motorcycle, complete with sidecar. Based on the one-wheel drive CT chassis, the electric CT makes use of zero motorcycle supplied powertrains and hints that an all-electric Ural might be on the way in the future. Given that I have a soft spot for these motorcycles, I mean, they are the ultimate in go anywheres if you're into combination outfits, I am really hoping they'll let me pop up to their US headquarters and put this through its paces. Sadly though, it isn't a two-wheel drive variant and I don't know if it's got reverse gear or not. The EV1, the iconic electric car from the turn of the century, which so many people loved and which was taken back and mostly crushed, is a car that pretty much every EV fan out there will recognize thanks to its iconic shape and Chris Payne's excellent Who Killed the Electric Car film. While most EV1s were crushed, a handful were immobilized, they had bits removed by GM, and then donated to museums and universities with strict instructions that they should never be used on the road again. <clears throat> Some survivors are very much loved, others have been left to rot on university campuses. But this week we heard a rumour that the EV1 donated to UC Berkeley was recently stolen late at night. I've contacted UC Berkeley, but as of the time of this recording, I've not been able to verify the rumours as the college is currently closed due to nearby wildfires. And finally, Dubai is known for having a lot of money. It's also known for its love of fast cars, the various supercars and hypercars it has on its police fleet, and more recently, its eagerness to adopt new technology. Well, this week we learned that the Dubai police force now have new vehicles in the form of all-electric hover bikes, and they've been learning how to fly them to chase down the criminals. Based on these videos, however, I'm not sure they're going to catch anyone, given how slow these hover bikes appear compared to your average sports car. It's truly truly bonkers. I'm sorry, it's mad. Certifiable. And on that note, it is the end of this week's show. As usual, like, comment, subscribe using the links below. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. And if you can, consider supporting us through Patreon. We really couldn't make these shows without all of the fantastic support that you give us through Patreon, and it's never too late to become a supporter if you're not one already. Because it's Thanksgiving next week, we won't have a usual 10 because... I'm based in the United States and the news cycle will be non-existent from Monday morning. And then the following week, I'm out of the studio all week, first in LA and then in Chicago. So we're actually not going to have any 10 roundups for two weeks. Rest assured, though, I'll be back at it on December 8th. So until then, I hope you enjoy all the content I've got planned for you in the interim. Have a happy Thanksgiving if you're celebrating. And I hope that, as always, you'll remember to be better, kinder and smarter to one another. Keep evolving.